Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Veg Networking Canada. It's important to honor, acknowledge, and respect that many of us are located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of many Indigenous peoples of Canada. Here we are, another episode of Veg Networking Canada, a community where vegan plant-based companies connect and collaborate. Today, we have a special guest. She is a PhD graduate in research psychology with a focus on the stigma of seeking help for mental health concerns. She supported a landmark study in the Children's Health Policy Center at Simon Fraser University, followed by being the manager of public policy at the Canadian Mental Health Association's BC division. She's on a mission to celebrate family and great tasting food while creating a brighter future for our planet and generations beyond us. Veg Network in Canada is pleased to introduce the founder and CEO of UME. Welcome, Nikki Talebi. Thank you for having me, Justin, and everybody. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here. Well, Veg Networking Canada, our community is delighted to have you to learn more about you and your business and everything that you have going on. So why don't we start with our first question for you, which is, what is the vegan plant-based origin story behind Ume and its products? Sure. Um, it is a little bit of a story. Uh some background with my family. Um, we are very much a foodie family. My father was in the food business. He was um, the best salesman that I ever knew. Um, and something I never ever thought that I would go near because you just have to put yourself out there so much. Um, and he was very successful. He was a, a broker. And um, it was kind of a fluke, um, very unfortunate accident in the summer of 2020 that um, really landed him in the hospital with some significant um, brain injuries. And from that moment, it really kind of changed the trajectory of all of us. I have a, a sister and we both have children and we have families. Um, so our routine shifted immediately. We would meal prep for our children and then go and really support our mom. Um, it was also navigating the pandemic and then hospital. Um, and so we would just go there and, and sit in the waiting room and be another set of ears and, and questions to try to digest everything. Um, and that lasted for four months. So my sister and I would always talk to each other. What are you cooking for your kids? Um, we couldn't find smoked tofu anywhere. And it was just such an easy staple um, that our children loved and that we could make sure was docked in the house. And my father loved using his smoker as a pastime to sort of gather the family around. He had given me his old smoker and it was a very facetious comment um, that I just told my sister, you know, I'll smoke tofu, <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. Uh, and then over that course of those four months, there were a lot of ups and downs and um, my father actually passed away. And it was a really, uh, I guess, pivotal moment where I had already been reevaluating my own career as much as it comes across as being very fulfilling. It just was not fulfilling me in the way that I thought that I would be. Um, and so I just was kind of at this crossroads where there was a silver lining um, and I thought an opportunity to kind of reinvigorate the tofu scene also presented in a little bit more of a premium way because um, being half Japanese, if anybody's ever been to Japan, packaging is just like so beautifully presented there. And so all of those pieces were kind of running through my mind. And I, I really took advantage of that opportunity and decided to take a bit of a leap um, and spent the, the next year just learning how to navigate starting a business um, in the CPG world and, and leaning on a lot of people to ask questions and um, have, have mentors, especially among women in the industry. And then last May, we launched. Um, so that's kind of the origin story. Um, and I'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> no need to stop. Um, and so, <laughs> needless to say, the, the, the reason to choose tofu is because your children loved it and it's something probably your family's loved. And then the smoking aspect of it, obviously coming from your father, like that's the reason for being specifically within the plant-based sector in CPG? Well, yes, all of those pieces, but also um, tofu aligns much more with my values. Uh, I... So my father, he was not smoking tofu. He was smoking a lot of other um, animal-based proteins. And so for me, that's not something that I'm comfortable doing. Um, 
tofu was really something that I was much more passionate about. And, and so taking his passion and, and turning it into something that was more values aligned for myself um, was, was part of the motivation. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And is Ume, uh, well, first, why don't you tell us what Ume means? Sure. So, of course, the entire business is centered around really honoring my father's legacy, but I'm half Japanese. And so Ume is a Japanese word. It means plum uh, blossom in Japanese, and it really honors the, the Japanese side of my heritage and, and my mom. Um, so it means, yes, plum blossom. It's a symbol of spring, new beginnings, which I think just very much resonates with this whole journey. Um, I love the way that the word rolls off the tongue and it's it's unique and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll gain some traction as we grow. We can all probably just picture proud mom alert when she's walking down the grocery stores and she sees the beautiful <laughs> packaging of Ume and what that must make her feel like. That's incredible. So is Ume the origin for you um, in terms of like your entrepreneurial spirit or spark? Or do you recall a time in your journey where you felt that earlier before Ume? Ume is my first entrepreneurial experience. Absolutely. I always admired entrepreneurs. My father was a diehard, diehard entrepreneur. He dabbled in a lot of different ventures. Um, and I just completely turned the opposite way. I thought that that was something that I would never be able to do. It's a very vulnerable, very um, courageous experience. You really have to put yourself out there. All things that I just really felt I was not. Um, so, so yes, this is my first, first experience at this. Absolutely. And isn't that fascinating mm -hmm. that, uh, we've all heard before the things that, uh, maybe turn us off or that we run away from, or the things that we should probably face and go towards. And here you are doing that. Uh, that's absolutely incredible. So the space that you're in, um, CPG, vegan plant-based, specifically tofu, specifically smoked tofu, Speak to this question or uh, in any which way that you want, but it's centered around transformations or trends in your industry. And we're curious to know things that you've spotted in your industry related to transformations or trends. I mean, yes, um, huge transformations. I feel particularly now we're seeing the unfortunate demise of a lot of what I thought were really stable companies that that I really admired. I mean, the Very Good Butchers is one that really comes to mind. Um, and and so I'm hearing that the, the really processed and like simulated um, overly processed meats are, are something that people are, are starting to shift away from and really go back to the wholesome, um, very, very clean ingredient um, products. And I think tofu really stands the test of time there. Um, you know, tofu has, has been around for centuries and it's a very traditional sort of simple process. And then for us, we really use clean ingredients. Um, we just marinate it. We use locally sourced cherry wood. So we try to really align with all of those pieces. Um, and I think that that's, that's a trend. I think people just are going back to the more natural side of food. Absolutely. And we, I'll start by saying that none of us here today, at least with us on this live call, are doctors or anything like that. With that being said, is there anything that you want to touch upon in terms of uh, phytoestrogens or estrogens as it relates to soy? Is there any, anything you want to touch on about that? Because that is something I think like a, almost like a bad trend as people assume this misinformation. Is there anything you want to touch on on that? So much misinformation there. Thanks for bringing that up, um, so I, I, I'm also like not an expert in this. I, I can definitely significant misunderstandings when it comes to the consumption of tofu. Some people feel that, you know, um, there's estrogen in it and it contributes to breast cancer and that you shouldn't consume, um, more than like a minimal amount or, or some completely steer away from it. Um, and it's, it's really quite the opposite phytoestrogens, as you pointed out, um, are more of a plant-based um, and it, it has really great research, like promote the benefits of, of preventing cancers. Um, and so I would just encourage people to, you know, before just taking on that, that kind of old wives tale to, to do their own research and really understand um, because it's a really great source of protein actually. 
Absolutely. Wonderful. Now, next question for you is centered around charity and giving back. And we always tell folks that there's no right or wrong answers to this. It might be something that you do personally. It might be something that the business does. It might be something that you've done in the past are currently doing or plan to do. But that's the question people really want to know in this values line market. How does a person or a company or a founder give back and what do they choose to give back to? So is there any uh, touch points for you about giving back for charity? For sure. There's so much that <laughs> I want to do as we grow. Um, right now, I think the biggest accomplishment that we've been able to to really lock down early in this journey is that we we just became plastic negative certified. Um, and so that means that, yes, for for so so being a smoked tofu has to be in a vacuum pack, um, especially with the type of shelf life that we really pride ourselves in. Um, there's just not really any other way around it. So the least that we can do is is offset um, all of the plastics. So the rubber gloves, the, the the saran wrap that you use for like securing around the pallets, any type of plastic we use, we really offset that. And then we double that. So we're also pulling away plastic um, from, from the planet. And there are projects in India that we're specifically targeting to support. So that's something that I'm really um, happy that we've been able to do so early in this journey. Um, and then in the future, I really would love to do more um, in terms of, of providing in the social community. I, I still am passionate about mental health. Um, and so I would love to circle back to that um, as we get a little bit more steady footing in the business um, and really contribute in that way. But I'm always open to, you know, people reaching out and asking questions. And, and there are so many that have done that for me. So I, I always, you know, am very happy to return the favor in any way that I can. That's incredible. Uh, plastic negative, such a such a big and important movement and very tangible to your business. Some of the consumer noticing mm -hmm. that like, hey, this has this, but look what they're doing. To, that That's great. And yeah, because in the intro, quite a uh, breadth and depth of uh, wisdom in the mental health space. And it makes sense um, seeing a lot of the conversations from founders um, of companies and having those conversations. So surely down the line, I'm we can all probably agree that there's a lot of insight that you can lend into that into that space. So that's great. And we'll be uh, surely seeing what what happens in, in that field for you. So in terms of resources, it might mean books, it might be podcasts, it might be apps on your phone, um, it might be community groups like Veg Network Canada or others. But that's the question that we're curious for those listening, if there's any resources that you can share that have worked for you, and it might be on mental health, it might be leadership, it might be CPG related, who knows, but are there any books, podcasts, apps, or communities that you want to recommend to folks? I, I really lean on so many of the things that you just mentioned, Justin. Um, podcasts, I'm always listening to, if I'm driving, if I'm commuting, if I'm having a moment in the morning for myself, I'm, I'm really always trying to consume. Um, and it's a whole breadth of it, everything from how I built this, um, to the Pack Heavy podcast, um, Startup CPG. I also listen to like Glennon Doyle um, and Brene Brown for, for more of the motivational, just like spiritual pieces for how to keep yourself going in this really challenging journey. Um, so all of those pieces, um, a biography when I had a little bit more time before delving into this that I read and I pulled it down because I didn't want to get it wrong. Um, her name is Indra Nui, My Life in Full, and she was the CEO for PepsiCo um, and a mother and wife and just listening to her journey and how she juggled all of that and like the level of sacrifice required to really excel. Um, that was something that I found really inspiring. I love biographies. Um, and then, you know, even like BC Food and Beverage, this type of community, I will directly reach out to entrepreneurs in this area, Jade Hermit and Yogu, um, and just ask for advice. Like I, I am not afraid to reach out to people and just um, lean on the community. So all of those resources um, I would recommend. Brilliant. Those are great. And some, I don't think some, some that we have had, there's, there's threads, right? There's certain ones that most people kind of need, but it's also some there that we haven't heard of. So that's, or at least myself and probably others listening haven't heard of. So that's great. You use the word inspiration, and that is the focus of the next question. Second to last question for you is inspiration. And it 
tends to mean different things to different people. Um, it might mean something internally, it might be externally, it might be people, it might be nature. But that's a question that we're curious to learn a little bit more about you and where do you source inspiration or what does even inspiration mean to you? It's a really good question. Um, I think on a daily basis, the inspiration for me is really modeling. I have little children. I have a, a five-year-old daughter and an eight-year-old boy. Um, and it's modeling to them that as, as a woman in this business um, and being as a mother, like you can be really more than that. I think for a long time, um, because I really took an extended mat leave, especially my daughter, uh, she did not see me outside of that specific role. And so I think the inspiration comes from just demonstrating to them that that you really should do something that's fulfilling, that really drives you, that you can be more than, you know, what, what we initially mold ourselves into um, and to demonstrate to them that if you really strive for something, you can grow into that. So that's like a daily motivator for me. But, but I also am motivated by trying to do something better for the planet. I really do want to make some type of an impact and, I have visions of, um, you know, zero waste sort of thoughts in the future and how that might work and using all of the parts of the soybean. And um, so a little bit lofty right now because we're so early, but but those are the, the pieces that also really motivate me and in, inspire me. Well, everybody listening is definitely into the lofty <laughs> goals, the big, hairy, audacious goals, the BHAGs, as, as some people know them. Um, and it also, you mentioned... Um, a few things there and off the top uh, in your in your intro we talked about um creating a brighter future for planet and generations beyond us safe to say that a big source of inspiration for you is the future right it sounds like mm -hmm. the future and what that looks like when you might not even be here is is very inspirational for you and that's mm -hmm. admirable for sure um so we're already at the last uh conversation starter question which is lessons wisdom tips some people like giving advice some people don't like framing it as giving advice but essentially boil it down that is what we're asking is is there any advice for maybe an entrepreneur who wants to become an entrepreneur or maybe someone like yourself who's pretty newly launched their brand it's their first dipping their toe in and it already feels like they're in the deep end of entrepreneurship any lessons wisdom tips advice anything like that for anybody listening I keep circling back to this and I really believe it. My biggest tip to the people who are entrepreneurs, hoping to be entrepreneurs, I think it's just really leaning in and trusting yourself. For the longest time, I really like tried to use more common sense. You know, you've got this education, you should be going down this path and, and why waste it? Um, but like when you have that gnawing feeling, um, as much as it's really terrifying, I think really leaning into that and, and going into that uncomfortable zone, um, and as entrepreneurs, we're uncomfortable like every moment of the day. Uh, I think, <laughs> I think really leaning into that, like there's just so much growth that can happen. And so that's that's like the piece of wisdom that I just try to really pass on to people is um, not being afraid of being afraid. Yeah. And to just no pressure here, but just to go like a layer beyond that, is there any tips, wisdom, lessons that you can? think of that have worked for you or others have passed down to you that um, is like a tactical way to lean into that gut feeling? Like, do you know what I'm saying? A tactical way of leaning into that feeling. Um, so I'll, I'll take my best interpretation at, at that question. Um, I think giving yourself some moments in the day to like, to just kind of fuel um, are really helpful. I, as much as we work really long hours and I feel always tapped out, um, my non-negotiable these days, and I've really tried to be diligent about it, is just like wake up before the whole family is up. I give myself, even if it's just 15 minutes of like my yoga in, in the closet, like it's not nothing <laughs> elaborate, but you know, I give myself that 15 minutes of doing something for my body to just like get my mind in the right headspace, and I'll even just read for 15 minutes. It'll be like a couple pages that I turn, but at least I've done that for myself. 
And I think that it just really fuels you and, and centers you to go down the path that you are telling yourself to go down. Um, yeah. I don't know if I answered your question, Janet, uh, Justin, but <laughs> yeah. Per perfect interpretation of what I was asking. So thank you for, okay. uh, it, yeah, exactly. That was great. Um, so before we let people know um, where they can drool and order and just all that good <laughs> stuff online and on Instagram, is there anything that has come up in this conversation that you want to circle back to and, or are there any announcements, really anything, the floor is yours before we bid you adieu for today? Uh, wow. Um, no, I mean, I think that you covered a lot of ground in all of the questions that you asked. I'm really thrilled that I was able to just, you know, talk about everything that this business means and, and what we're all about. We are just about to enter into CHFA, which feels like a really important and, and growth piece for us um, as an industry led trade show. We'll be at Planted Expo. So I would just be delighted to see everybody stop by and say hi. Um, we're always doing R and D and our first birthday is coming up in May. So there will be some exciting things around that. Um, but thank you for having me. Well, thank you for carving out some of your time with us in the <laughs> Veg Networking Canada community today. And everybody make sure that you check out UME at CHFA and Plants at Expo coming up this year. Uh, like we said, you can find out more online, www.thisisume and UME is O-O-M-E. So this is ume.com and it's the same on Instagram at this is ume, O-O-M-E. And this has been another episode of Veg Networking Canada with the founder and CEO of Ume, Nikki Talebi, and everybody else. We'll catch you soon for another episode, another great conversation on Veg Networking Canada. Until then, take care. Bye for now. Thank you. <laughs>